Everyone used to grow tobacco in Southside Virginia or knew someone who did. Today there are relatively few tobacco growers left in the region, but you can see symbols of the history and importance of the golden leaf by counting how many old tobacco barns are still standing. Preservation Virginia lists these structures as endangered sites worthy of protecting. Tobacco was grown all over Virginia, and there are tobacco barns in every part of the state. But in this part of the state, uh, where brightleaf tobacco really took root, um, it's typically called the Old Belt, um, and it also goes into North Carolina. You will see a lot of these flu-cured tobacco barns in the landscape, and they really have uh, become a integral part of the landscape of Virginia in this part of Virginia. I've heard people say that uh, the tobacco barns in Southside are like the windmills of Holland. The tobacco barns of A.J. Knuckles' family farm are good examples of these structures that are still standing. Built in the early 19th century, one is frame-built and joined with mortise and tenon joints. The other is a log structure with notched ends. Both were built from shortleaf pine trees, as were most of the local barns. These barns were built for cut tobacco. They cut the whole stalk. It was only I think in the 1920s that they actually started harvesting it, pulling it by stalk position. These barns were built for cut tobacco, so the logs are, I mean, the, the tear poles are wide apart vertically to hang whole stalks of tobacco. Uh, my grandpa said they put 1,200 sticks of tobacco in, in this, this barn. There were no tractor-trailer trucks in those days, so this extremely valuable commodity had to be carefully packed and shipped by hand. They took the hogshead, which was a wooden barrel, a big wooden barrel, and they set it upright and prized or pressed. They, Grandpa described it as a lever operation, that they pressed the tobacco into these hogsheads. Then they rolled the barrel over on the side put an axle through it, attach sheaves to the axle, put a horse, and rolled the barrel to market. History lessons like this help make the heritage of tobacco production and farming come alive for future generations. And everything centered around the old barns back in the day. But time plays no favorites, and many of these barns are gone or crumbling fast. Billy Johnson's farm has log barns that were built in the mid-20th century. They are also wood-fired, flu-cured tobacco barns. Johnson's barns were some of the last built in the county. He remembers often staying up all night watching the wood fires that kept the heat flowing to cure the leaf. And we cut the logs off the place. We had what you call an old-fashioned barn raising where everybody in the community come and help uh, put the logs up, notch the corners like you see it. and. Um, that was quite a day because <clears throat> most time the people that had the barn raising, uh, their family would furnish dinner. And there'd be two tables of them. That barn right there would hold uh, 440 sticks of tobacco, hand strung. It's part of history uh, that we have in this area, and we need to keep it. Preservation Virginia offers a mini-grant program for owners interested in raising funds to stabilize and preserve old tobacco barns. The Tobacco Barn Preservation Project is the first of its kind in the state. The knowledge of how to repair these old structures is very specialized, so the project also offers advice and training on repairing them. You can learn more at their website, preservationvirginia.org, and by searching for tobacco barns. In Pennsylvania County, this is Dave Miller.